as we rolled into what would end up being my last deployment with, uh, with Ranger in the 17th, um, I, uh, we all know that there's another mission that we support. Um, that's not super attached to the regiment, but it's still the regiment. Yeah. Um, so I was on that mission or I was on that, on that deployment. It was my, like my trip like that, you know, I got to have my beard and do all the things. It's fun. Um, a little, little fob tucked into the mountains just outside, of, outside of Kandahar. I think everyone knows where that is now. Um, also one of my most dynamic trips in my life. Oh, so I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think I've been in more gunfights yeah. in that trip. You know, and it's like, I'm in like 16 years of my career now, at this point, 15, 16 years of my career, um, where I wasn't scared or bothered on my first mission as a 19, 20 year old. I had some trepidations because <laughs> I, I was like, man, it's a, it's like every, people always got blown up in front of me or behind me or like, like shot next to me or something like nothing ever happened to me. Right. Like per se. I'm like, man, it's like a matter of time, dude. Yeah. You know, so you start getting a little nervous, mm-hmm. like just a little like caution, like, oh, this is, and you, in the caution, the content, you're, you're measuring what you're doing against like what you're accomplishing. Right. Like back when I was 20, like, dude, let's go on every single mission. <laughs> right. Let's just go. Yeah. And like, now I'm like, is this guy really the guy? <laughs> right. Is, are we just, are we screwing off right now? What's, what's going on, guys? Yeah. <laughs> like, but like, I can't say no to like going out of the boys and getting after it. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and we also had some really restrictive ROE at that time, uh, like policy changes and all the things were making it really weird. Um. And uh, I'll give an example. Like we were in a we were in a gunfight, and AWT were holding off away from us, and they're like, "We're waiting for clearance to come in." I'm like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "I'm like, keen to hand, like there are gunshots going on behind me. They can hear it." I'm like, "Like guys, you hear that? Like we need help. Yeah, yeah. like we got to get approval from the air base commander at CAF if we can expend the gas because there was only so much gas allocated to like." a certain amount of hours of like combat versus like base security. Jeez. And so I'm like, weird. I'm like, guys, super weird. And like our, our customer was like, what are they doing, man? Yeah. So now like my trust has been degraded with them. Cause like I can't deliver the asset. Oh, for sure. Yeah. They're not thinking that and, the, like, we had the a- helos aren't coming in. They're thinking, Hey, air force, why aren't you bringing in these helos? Like what, what are you doing? Even the fact that like I couldn't convince them to like use the gas, even though we were in a gunfight, like you can't do anything for us. I'm like, I'm trying to get them over here. Like, yeah. like, um, or they'd be on station. They check out. I'm like, hey guys, the second you guys leave, like if you guys don't have a replacement, because that was another thing. Like, like they couldn't replace. They couldn't like do swaps of aircraft. Yeah. Like, I'm like the second you guys leave, like we're gonna get another gunfight. I'm like we know. And then I had NQ9s overhead. Like that was like pseudo effective sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, it was just a really like it was a really weird period of time for the entire task force. Yeah. Um, not just us, it's the whole task force, right? Um it's the closest I've come to dying was this trip. Um there's a, a gunfight in a little area called Maywand, um, which I'm sure some guys are familiar with. And uh it was like a twelve hour long gunfight. We we're just in a gunfight all day long. Um and uh where was one time we're like down below this berm, like not the berm, but like an irrigation ditch, right? And um, so like just some dirt in front of our face and like we've got some tall grass in front of us. I pick my head up, I start like with my mouth open because I'm a mouth breather. <laughs> and I start getting like dirt in my mouth from bullets kicking dirt in my face. Jeez. And I just like, and me and my buddy are on the, on the deck, like, like, dude, I'm as, I'm as low as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> and I usually like, I'm like, which is not a unique experience. Guys have been shot at lots of times. So like the experience is not unique, right? Like I'm not like, so, but, um, but, yeah, but it's still, it's like, never good. I mean, no matter how many not, times you've, not good, you've been like, under fire, that's still bad. Like the, the dirt wall behind us, there's a compound behind us, like, which is getting stitched up. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to break contact and we're going to move to a better location so we can actually do some work. Um, cause we're fairly well pinned down. Um, we had guys stuck in a compound too. And, uh, this is ridiculous. And, uh, so I jump up and I, just do, you know, return the fire and I sprint out and then end up getting a bullet hole in my pants. So, you know, like that extra pocket on the front of your, uh, on the front thigh of your, your multicams. Yeah, yeah. So like, cause that extends, that's like protrudes. <laughs> I, uh, I got a bullet hole in my pants that Jeez. day. Uh, those, uh, those, those pants are now shorts and I mow the yard in them. 
<laughs> but uh, like, I'd never been faster in my life either. Oh my god, I was fast that day. Um, you know, and God got the wall. Like, and then um, we were we're finally like we're fuck, we're over it. This is this day is is pointless, right? Um, <clears throat> we get back to the to the convoy, the gaff, um, and our our truck driver, our, our Hilux driver, is our PJ. Okay. Um, and he's never driven sick before until this trip, oh, really. Oh, <laughs> um, and uh, it's me in the backseat with my R- with the RTO, and we're driving. And we get stuck in sand, like you get stuck in snow. Yeah. And an ambush initiates on our vehicle. God damn. And and like the convoy took off. Oh no. Uh, thankfully, we had trucks behind us. But oh. like I remember looking at my RTO, and like because he was on like the ambush side. Yeah. yeah. Uh. And I'm like, I was just, I'm looking at him. I was like, I'm going to watch him die. And then I'm going to die. This is, we're done. Man. <laughs> and then uh, our, our partner force rolls up and they got some really great guns in the truck. They just start, and we get out and push the truck out. And like, we're getting ambushed the whole way back up to the convoy. Like, it's just this ridiculous situation. Jeez. Um, and, uh, you know, and um, this is also the last trip. I, and I, I really want to talk about this. Not really want to talk about it, but like, it's important. Um. So, so not knowing is my last combat deployment yet. I we were in a, on a mission and we were getting shot at. We had the guys on a motorcycle, and uh, at AWT on station, great. <laughs> they were actually allowed to fly this time, great. <laughs> um, so ended up doing a call for fire on those guys. Took them out. Um, I actually never said this to anyone, but and that's the last call for I ever did in my in my my career. Um, I didn't get emotional like I wanted to cry, but I was kind of overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, and like I was just like, I think I was exhausted. I don't know what it was, but like, I didn't feel. I was. I mean, I happy. I was happy. I did my job. Yeah. But I was just like, it's kind of. It was tough. I don't know why. I didn't feel bad about killing the guys. Um, it was just, it was just emotional for some reason. Um, I don't know, and I I can't explain it. And I mean, you've been doing this since the beginning, and it's like, you know, after a while, it takes its toll on you. You know, it's just it it, it becomes. I think to I think for a lot of guys, it becomes less cool and more like a slog, and it's and that, like it's it just emotionally, it's a it's a you know having that heightened awareness and that heightened sense of purpose all the time just is exhausting. It was it was a relief. I did it right. It was the relief that it. Like it wasn't us. Like it was just like, I was like, ugh. And then that same day, um, we'd had a one of our partner force vehicles hit a an ID. Yeah. They were just in the back, uh, in the in the bed, and one guy got his kind of his his face peeled off a little bit, mm. you know. Um, and uh, we knew we were gonna hit IDs. We we, just, we knew it. Yeah. Like, we, like we're like, this is gonna suck. Like show some of that. So, um, and this goes back to Operation Scrutinize. Um, where like I had like three troops in contact at one time, and I was having to in the sim in the scenario in the sim like three troops in contact, maintaining the squirter, doing a casvac, all these things. Like it goes, and it also goes back to like having to change fills and vehicle nav and do all these things in the cold. And like people like you can do more than one thing at a time. And like then going to the sim, like oh my gosh, so much, so many things are happening, right? Yeah. Um, and then going to the final real world scenario where like we were in troops in contact, we had an IED, a guy had been hurt. Uh, I'm calling in dust off. Uh, the EOD team is clearing the HLZ. I'm doing the HLZ and Kazakh briefs, um, managing all the other air assets. And like, so, so it was the same day I did the call for fire, right? I felt more pride in myself and was like, happier that I'd done the Kazakh and like managed all the things yeah. really well that day. Because like the, the dude, he's alive, like he, he led and all things. And yeah, yeah. I was more proud that like, I was, all this, all these things that like finally come together, and like I, I did it. Yeah. Right. Like I was, I was more proud of getting that dude out of there and doing it well and getting him taken care of than, a, than I was like just doing a little shitty call for fire on two dudes in a motorcycle. I didn't really care. Right. Right. I was like, Ugh. well, I mean, there's so, a there's a, a, a higher purpose behind getting your own guys out than you know just taking out another threat. You know, so I could understand that for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was just happier. I was like, that's interesting that I was, I was more happy doing that than I was doing a kinetic piece. Hey!